So my topic, little, little twist in the topic, advances in MIS. I'll try my best to see what's up there. And as you know, we've been doing this for more than 20 years now. My disclosures are there. Um, I guess, yes, some of the instruments I have designed. It's basically strategies. It's not, it's not one surgery. It depends what the patient needs, right? But these are all the tools you have. And how do you go about what you really need for that particular patient? The MRI has really changed how we understand fractures today. Posterior ligament integrity, I think we truly understand. And Telex took, took us a long way in sort of thinking thinking about fractures the right way. We think about a three column, think about the ligament, and of course we classify them, but these all still play a role, at least understanding the fracture anatomically, so that we can now make the right decision. But this is one classification I use a lot, I really like. It's a McCormick gains classification of vertebral communition. It's really useful to consider for anterior column support. When do you need that? It's not about whether you go anterior or posterior. To me, it's about when do I need that anterior column support, and we'll talk about that, how we do that. MIS2, so I find that pretty useful to put it together. So we know about cement, we just heard about it. I think it's a great tool to augment in osteoporotic elderly patients. But I think the key has been percutaneous instrumentation, multi-level, that you can do MIS today to get posterior longitudinal realignment, reduction, translation, and, and holding it together. Yes, navigation, robotic assisted navigation has sort of made all that easy, but it costs in you. Middle of a polytrauma, patient sick as hell, just use Floro and get on with it. Not fool around in navigation and robots. If you're really slick at it, then yes. But please watch your time, watch hemodynamics, but certainly helpful. Contouring the rod is the key in any MIS technique. You're pulling the spine to the rod and it will come wherever you put it. So it becomes critical that you contour the rod right to rotate, translate, and realign that spine that's fractured. And, and so that's an important tool. These reduction towers become very useful. Everyone has them. Uh, and so you have these great magnitudes of reduction you can achieve with these towers done percutaneously. And then you have different sets of screws you can use, like a fixed angle screw on either side of a fracture. Gives you great control. A sagittally angled screw, one, one level removed gives you time for contouring. You've got mono axis. So different screws you can place as needed. Usually you don't need a lot. A regular polyaxial screw works unless a big time fracture dislocation where you need fixed angle screws adjacent to the fracture level. The screw anchor we just talked about, I think to me it's going to be a game changer coming MIS. But it's been very hard MIS to get good screw fixation in the osteoporotic. So that would be coming, you can see that threading down a wire in Jan. So I'm looking forward to that in terms of sort of getting better fixation. So. You can address both stable and unstable fractures, understanding the mechanics of reduction percutaneously, using levers to compress or distract to get what you need. But honestly, the key is positioning, rod bending, and creating that reduction that you need through the towers. Most of it occurs there. We, way back, Publicis concepts in 2006, and actually a lot of them have come to fruition. I'll be honest with you, we were just basically thinking out of our hats, what we could use at that point and put this paper down. But I think a lot has come to fusion since. So one of the easiest places to use MIS, you did your carpectomy for whatever reason, why open the back to put open screws? Do percutaneous screws. If you're thinking of posterior stabilization for a carpectomy, you can just do perk screws in the back. Simple, straightforward indication. If you want to use anything MIS, you can just put perk screws like in this patient. Did a carpectomy, Telix is seven. You've done what you've done. Maybe an open carpectomy. We'll talk soon about how we can do that MIS and our principles of how we approach these things. But this is a simple way to start perk screws. But this is a basic outline and principle for every single trauma. And I'll ask you to look at it and we'll talk to you how we do it. We always realign posteriorly first. You do your perk screws, your quick, fast realign, get your alignment with indirect reduction. Most of the time you will get it. If you have a neurological deficit, there's a piece in the canal, go or decompress it as you need to. If there's still neurological deficit, massive anterior communication, go ahead, do the carpectomy that same day. But now you've got posterior realignment, makes your carpectomy so much easier. But remember, I'm doing the carpectomy MIS. It's circumferential MIS. So I'm looking through a small window. I want my stability to do the carpectomy. But I can go in, do my carpectomy, put in the cage as needed, if there's no deficit and the patient's hemodynamically unstable, stabilize, stage it, another time come back for the carpectomy, but now the patient can be mobilized with all the other injuries they got. And then, this is the key, 
Remove the hardware that you haven't fused, the levels you haven't fused, take it out. And so that's what we've been doing nine months to a year. Having said that, there is a paper from Canada. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To continue, please log in or create an account for free. Thank you for your support.